Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my art channel. Thank you so much for being here. This is part two of my little series on outer space, so thanks for coming back. If you didn't see my first video, I did this beautiful flip cup that just ended up looking like this nebula out in the middle of the starry space, and it's wonderful, and you can watch the video here. Today I am doing a Sarah Mac style galaxy pour. So it's a straight pour uh, in a particular style that Sarah Mac kind of came up with. I'm very excited. So I have a 16 by 16 inch canvas and I'm going to put my own spin on things by, drumroll, spinning it. <laughs> okay, a little pun humor. I can't resist. Sarah usually tilts out her um, galaxy pores, but I want to spin mine because I love how it just uniformly stretches. I may do a little bit of hand tilting, but I want to mostly spin it. So I've got some black paint in here. It's not a full cup. So my paint is all mixed with Floetrol, about one part paint to two parts Floetrol, and then thinned with water until it reaches the consistency that I think is right. In this particular case, I'm calling it sort of a medium thin, so it flows very nicely, but it still kind of piles up in the cup just a little bit. So I have black, this is apple barrel black. Then my white paint is house paint. This is semi-gloss house paint. So I've used house paint in a lot of my pores before, and I've gotten that wonderful cloud effect. Like in this painting right here, house paint helped create all those beautiful clouds. This is a different brand of house paint than I have used before, but um, I think it'll probably still work about the same way. Then my colors over here, these are mostly kind of leftovers. I like getting these little cups that have lids to save my paints after a pour because then I can use them for another one. So I've got all these leftover colors and I just kind of grabbed a bunch because often when Sarah does her galaxy pours, she has a whole bunch of different colors that she throws in there and they look amazing. So I just pretty much grabbed everything that looked like it would fit. And most of them are pretty small amounts, but I think it'll work well. So I have Rouge by uh, Master's Touch Acrylics. And you can't really see the flow very well here because there's not much in the cup. And then I have Glow in the Dark by Folk Art. So do you see it runs off the stick? This actually looks thicker than it actually is. Sometimes when they sit for a little bit, they thicken up. You see that? This makes a little trail. Whoops, I spilled some. That'll be fine. And then, oh, I have Pearlized Dark Blue. This was another Christmas present from one of my daughters. Uh, that's Master's Touch. Then I have Caribbean by Apple Barrel. And this one was also part of this pour that made those beautiful cloudy effects. And that's what you really want in a galaxy pour. So I've got it in here today. Then this is Dioxazine Purple by Blick Studio Acrylics. This one is a mica pigment. This is Galaxy from Let's Resin. It's a, a color shifting chameleon powder and I mixed it with gloss gel and then Floetrol so that it's essentially its own paint custom mixed paint, and you can watch the video here to know how I mixed this. How do I mix it with gloss gel and Floetrol? So that one's pretty cool. It looks kind of pink, but it shines green, so that's cool. Plus, this is a galaxy pour. I had to have galaxy mica in it. And then this is sort of a magenta, which it's a leftover mix. I don't know exactly what brand. This is Glow in the Dark Blue by Folk Art. Brilliant Yellow Green by Blick Studio Acrylics. Some of these look thicker. I mixed up all these paints and then I had to like put my kids to bed and they, so they sat out for, I don't know, 45 minutes with their lids off. So they may be slightly thicker than I wanted them to be. I think it'll still work. Then this is a Dark Navy. This is a mix of phthalo blue and black. 
some metallic purple, either craft smart or folk art. Um, some bright aqua green by Blick Studio Acrylics. And finally, some metallic gold, which I think is a blend of brands. Whew! That was a lot of colors. And they're all going into this cup. It should be pretty fun. Let's make a painting. So let's layer up our cup. Today I'm using a silicone mixing cup. It says it's eight ounces, but the eight ounce mark is down here. So I think it really is gonna hold 10 or 11 ounces of paint. And I like that I can squeeze it to let out a smaller stream at the end if I want to do that. So as I layer, it's gonna be mostly these colors, some white and some black, because I do want this to look like it's in space. So I want it to look kind of three-dimensional, like the dark space background is poking through all these colors. But I'm going to start with some of these. So I'm going to put my rouge down at the bottom because I want that to come out last. And I'm pretty much using up these, like whatever's in the cup, I'm using it up. And, you know, I may save that in case I need to do touch-ups but that's pretty much empty. And then some of this glow-in-the-dark neutral color. And then some of the pearlized dark blue. And because I want these paints to stack, I am sliding them down the side. That way they kind of slide and flow on top instead of dropping down in. All right, Caribbean. Let's do some of this dioxazine purple and then we'll add some white house paint. Now I first started using house paint in my pores because I wanted a white paint that would stack in a layered cup and wouldn't just sink down like a lot of white, just acrylic paints do. Uh, Left Brained Artist has a really interesting video about why to use house paint. And he said it's got like a more spongy texture, so it's actually less dense. And so it floats better. As you can see, it is sitting on top of my other colors. So house paint is a great thing to use if you want a white paint that stacks. Okay, uh, here's the galaxy, and I'm going to put pretty much all of this in here. Since these are small, small cups of leftovers for the most part, most of them are just going to be a single layer. And then let's add some black. Pretty big layer of black there. All right, some of this magenta. And some glow-in-the-dark blue. And let's add some more of this white house paint because it does seem like house paint, semi-gloss house paint, can be crucial for making those clouds which are so it's like one of the main features of a galaxy pour. I'm shifting it over here so that I don't like push down my canvas too, too much. Okay, uh, brilliant yellow green. We'll just put all that in there. Um, now some of the dark navy. metallic purple. Let's add some more black because so far I've only added the one layer of black. There's some black. And then some of this bright aqua green. It's 
some metallic gold. Okay, we're getting close to the top of the cup, and I've used up at least one layer of all my colors, so I'm just going to start adding in a few more however I feel like it. So let's add some more purple and some more turquoise and some more that's Caribbean, not turquoise. Uh, glow in the dark. Because there's not a lot of that in there. Maybe a little bit more of this. I don't know. Just kind of throwing stuff in at this point. Okay. I pretty much have a full cup of colors here. So when Sarah pours her galaxy pours, often she makes kind of a, like a little puddle of base paint that she pours it down into. So I think I'm going to do that. Not a, not a really big puddle, but a little bit of one. Tilt that a little bit. Okay. And the reason that I have my canvas sort of off center with my spinner is because I've got thumbtacks under the canvas that help hold it up when I move it off the spinner. And they also help to sort of grip the sides of the spinner so that it doesn't fly off. But that's why it's off center. Okay, so I'm going to pour this. I'm going to sort of go up and down. You know, pour from a height, pour from down low. I might make some circles. It's possible that I will spin the canvas just a little bit as I pour. I really don't know. This should be fun. Let's do it. Ha! Ah, I dripped here, not there. Yes! This is looking amazing. I love that there's so much black in it. So I'm really glad that I poured into that black puddle. I was starting to make my spiral at the end, and then I was like, wait, I wanted the rouge. The rouge was at the bottom. I wanted that to be in the middle. So I kept pouring. Happy that I did. Okay, so I'm a little off-center here, obviously. So let's get it centered at least. Okay. I'm going to pour some paint here around the corners just to help cover the edges. I'm just loving how this looks. It is amazing. There's a lot more color on this side. This side's a lot darker, but the cloud effect and, and the cells and the reaction is like exactly what I was going for. So I'm very happy. Hmm. Do I just want to spin? Let me try tilting a bit, but I'm not going to go over any of the corners. I just want to kind of stretch it, stretch it a bit.
See, when you go over a corner and then come back, what happens is you get these sort of wiggly shapes in your corners. And I don't love that wiggly shape. I know some people do, or they don't mind it. When you spin something, all the paint flows off the sides like equally. And uh, wow, it looks like a rose in the center. That's amazing. Anyway, let me give this a gentle spin, see how it stretches. I may tilt a little bit. Oh, let me torch first, actually. All right, bring up just a little bit more in the way of cells. Okay, let's spin. Actually, I'm gonna stop. It's already starting to spread, that's great. I don't like this triangle. Maybe as it stretches, it'll not be a triangle like that. Crazy. Oh man, very cool. Okay, so it's starting to come off on this side, which is good. Unfortunately, we're losing the gold. Wah. Um, let me tilt it back this way. I don't love this corner that I'm getting. Okay, how interesting is that? It's like this space rose. I love it. Okay, so I'm liking the shape of this center area much better now. Better than that weird triangle I had going on. I do need to keep spinning it. There's a lot of paint still on the canvas and some of these wiggly edges that I've made, I wanna get those off. Let's spin again. Cool. I do like having the center off center, so that that's intentional to leave it that way. I kind of want to make it go this way more, so I'm gonna bring it that way. Okay, yes. Whoop, that's the overall design that I want. Now, I want these corners to go off. So we'll go back to just pretty much being centered and keep on spinning until I'm happy. I think I need to spin it harder at this point. Very cool. Wow. Yeah. Man, the whole thing is clouds. It's amazing. Huh. Okay, so the thing that I have to figure out now is, do I totally embrace this as a space pour and do some speckle stars on it? because there is still black around the edges. And there are some cells that have opened up which do look like stars. <sighs> yeah, 
you know, I think I'm going to leave it as is and not add stars. I think this piece speaks for itself. Let me give you a close up. So here it is. Okay, I'm completely in love with this piece and this technique. I don't know why I haven't tried this exact one yet. But look at those just dreamy layers there between the purples and sort of the turquoise. And then around here we start getting those nice bolder cells, the cloud effect. So very cool there around the edge. I love this section in here where they're all sort of edged with black. And then here in the center, the pink is just so dreamy as it sort of folds in from the white and it's a really pretty center too. So I love this. I will show you how it looks when it is dry and see whether any of that glow in the dark showed up. I don't know. It might disappear. We'll see. But yeah, let's head straight there. Okay, it's dry. It dried really beautifully. So you can see that some of the colors did go a bit darker as it dried, particularly that rouge in the center. It's still noticeably maroon, you know, it hasn't gone too dull, but it has darkened a bit. But then take a look at that, that metallic blue. So that was the pearlized dark blue, which I put in right there in the middle of the cup. And it looks just absolutely beautiful all over the place. And when this painting is varnished, it's going to look even shinier. But yeah, there's that center. You can see there is still color there. And some of the glow-in-the-dark white, which was making all those layers, it did fade a bit, but it didn't disappear completely, which is nice. But yeah, beautiful layers. I just think this turned out really, really cool. Love that section. So what's interesting to note about this is I had like 13 different colors plus black and white that I layered into that cup. And once I got it all finally stretched out, there's only like seven colors that you can even see. There's rouge, the glow in the dark, then there was the, the metallic blue and the Caribbean and then there was some purple and a couple of other colors that you can detect kind of around the edges. You know, there's a little bit of that sort of magenta color that you can see. There's some of that um, galaxy. You see how it's like orange and then it shines to green, but there's only a hint of that because after layering it up, it was really the paint that was in the center that ended up taking over the whole painting. So if I was to do this again, I would, I mean, I did, I picked my center colors carefully, but I would think more about like, how do I want to create more contrast? I might've put gold closer to the middle, just, just to add a little bit more pizzazz in the middle, but I love the way it turned out and I, can't wait to try more of this technique. All right, so now comes the question, how did the glow in the dark look? So as with some of my other paintings, glow in the dark paint layered on top of a dark color does not glow very bright. So let me show you what it looks like with the lights off. Okay, so you can see that there is some glow there, but it's just not really bright and it's not super defined. Anyway, thanks for joining me for part two for my space series. Be sure to come back next week and check out part three, which is going to be a very exciting two-layer pour. But thanks for watching this one. I hope it inspired you to try something new, and I will see you back on my channel very soon for another video. Bye!